This February, Pokemon celebrated its 20th anniversary, which may feel weird for those of us who remember getting our hands on Pokemon Red or Blue, spoiler alert, the cool kids got blue when it first came out. But the popularity of these little pocket monsters hasn't waned at all since then, spawning a small battalion of video games, nearly 20 movies, a wildly popular card game, and a TV show that served as a staple for many a childhood. So to celebrate 20 years of Pokemon, today on Channel Frederator we're counting down the 12 best moments from the series, and some of the movies too. Let's get started. Number 12, James Buys a Magikarp. Poor decision making was a character hallmark of Team Rocket, but few moments in the series highlighted this more than when James is conned into buying Magikarp. Even though the salesman was awkwardly racist, the dramatic irony of the audience knowing that Magikarps are totally worthless made James's optimism and inability to sense anything fishy absolutely hilarious. In the Route 4 Pokemon Center, in the original red and blue versions, you could buy a Magikarp in similar fashion. Though if you're better than James, you know to send it straight to daycare and rare candy that sucker to level 20. See how much of a scam it is then. Anyways, needless to say, when James tries to use the Magikarp in battle, he finds himself floundering. Okay, okay, we're done with the fish puns. You feel bad when he kicks the Magikarp though. It's not its fault it battles like a fish out of water. Number 11, the origin of Mewtwo. After a couple of seasons of haphazard villains, the rise of Mewtwo was a refreshing change of pace. Finally, a villain that was the cause for legitimate concern. And yet, as unequivocally evil as Mewtwo turned out, his origins humanize him to an unexpected degree. Once we learn that Mewtwo Mewtwo was in a lab without knowing who or where he was, and see how all his friends die right before his eyes, suddenly we feel bad for Mewtwo. The story has some actual depth too as a warning about a man corrupting the course of nature for the sake of greed and power, in addition to putting an unforgettable spin on one of the most formidable villains in Pokemon history. Number 10, Mirage Mew's Sacrifice. In the 10th anniversary special of Pokemon, Ash and Pikachu must battle a holographic but equally deadly version of Mewtwo. And as we've learned by this point in the series, going against Mewtwo on your own is basically a death sentence, especially if you're Ash and you're not very good at what you do. Thankfully for our heroes, a Mirage Mew intervenes and sacrifices itself to subdue the Mewtwo so Pikachu can destroy it. Watching the Mew heroically dissolve into non-existence can only be met with a heavy heart, but on the bright side, fans got to witness a tiny, non-evolved Pokemon take down the most formidable in history. Number 9, Growly. For many, the optimal human Pokemon relationship is epitomized by Ash and Pikachu, but James has again and again proven himself to be surprisingly compassionate, capable of developing deep relationships with his Pokemon, and his bond with his childhood Growlithe, adorably nicknamed Growly, is perhaps one of the most touching relationships in the whole series. Anyone who had a rough childhood, like James did, can tell you that a relationship with a pet can grow incredibly strong during that period, which is why James's backstory and the necessity for him to leave Growly twice is the incredibly dangerous combination of both heartbreaking and relatable. Number 8, the many, many Nurse Joys and Officer Jennies. You may have noticed in the Pokemon video games that the police officers and nurses are stock characters, so you could easily identify them in any given city. When it came time to make the anime, the animators decided to keep all the nurses and officers as identical stock characters, quickly making Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny one of the show's best running gags. The only explanation the characters offer is that they are related to one another. It's also one of the best meta phenomenon in the anime, and fans are obsessed with creating clone theories. Number 7, Metapod versus Metapod. If you ever played the games and you were an impatient person, you probably never took the time to train a Metapod, which is probably why you beat the Elite Four and Ash never has. Still, one of the worst Pokemon can lead to the most intense fight when facing a trainer who also sends out a Metapod. What's a Metapod to do except harden? Who can harden the hardest? Who can become the most- Okay, okay uh, we're not gonna touch that one. Point is, the battle literally lasts all afternoon, and no one really ends up winning, but it's a hilarious illustration of how straight up silly some Pokemon are. And really, the only Pokemon sillier is Spoink. It has to keep jumping or it dies. Number six, Jigglypuff gets mad. Everyone knows that Jigglypuff's signature move is Sing, and how that haunting melody is guaranteed to put your enemy, and anyone else within earshot, to sleep. Even though this is usually a brilliant strategy, Misty's Jigglypuff loves singing so much that it will close its eyes as it performs, and then is understandably upset when it realizes that its song has induced snores instead of applause. So what does Jigglypuff do? What any angry musician does when people don't pay attention to their music. It draws on the audience faces. This is especially excellent when Jigglypuff puts on a concert in a town square and, predictably, puts everyone to sleep. Jigglypuff must work the whole night to exact its revenge on an entire town. Maybe more bands should try this tactic if anyone's using their phone during a concert. Number 5, Meowth's Backstory. Team Rocket's Meowth spends most of the 
Pokemon series spitting sarcasm and sassy one-liners, which are a delight, but when one considers that he's one of the select few Pokemon who has full command of language, it becomes clear that there was more to Meowth than meets the eye. So it was a welcome gesture when the show finally hit us with Meowth's backstory. But boy, it was a doozy. Poor Meowth was abandoned as a baby and was always starving, and so he moves to Hollywood for ice cream and fried chicken. You know, the usual reasons people move to Hollywood. The story only gets sadder from there, revealing that he learned to walk and talk for the love of a she-meowth who eventually just called him a freak. Who among us hasn't learned an entirely different language for love? Te espero, mi amor. It gave us a depth to a character that most shows would have left one-dimensional. It still never explained why he has a Jersey accent, though. He and Joey Wheeler should really talk about that. Number four, Red defeats Mewtwo. Pokemon Origins was something a lot of people always wanted to see. A telling of the story of the first games in anime form, where the protagonist was capable and Pikachu was underpowered at best. It's awesome, and it caps itself off in one of the most climactic battles in any young trainer's life, facing off against Mewtwo, where the first movie chooses to explore the existential crisis of a Pokemon grown in a lab and how that might make a supervillain, the Pokemon Origins fight is content to capture the spirit of the battle itself. A level 70 demigod versus you and your best team of six. It's every bit as fierce as your childhood mind made it out to be. Mewtwo levels an Articuno with a single attack. Everything here is a well choreographed testament to the original fight that blends in some of the new games with the featuring of a mega evolution. Number three, Butterflea leaves Ash forever. Meta Pod wasn't content to just take up one spot on this list, the evolved form of the Pokemon gets a well-deserved encore. Pokemon had its fair share of tear-jerking moments, and everyone felt this softer side of the series when Ash realizes his Butterfree wants to start a family, and sets him free. The tears and feelings shared between both Pokemon and owner is enough to make almost any audience member cry. The scene is a reminder of how life can drift us apart against our wishes. Number two, the Squirtle Squad. Here Comes the Squirtle Squad was one of the most popular episodes of the original anime. Watching a gang of delinquent Squirtles terrorize our heroes and Team Rocket for the hell of it was an absolute delight. And it was clear the show's writers had a ball with them as well working in as many cowboy and battle references as possible, as well as supplying the squad with ample opportunity to laugh in people's faces. And their sunglasses were so stylish. As far as I'm concerned, one of the greatest Pokemon mysteries is why Ash's Squirtle didn't keep the shades. I think we can all agree we could have stood a lot more Squirtle Squad in the series. And number one, Pikachu crying. Pikachu emerges as the first movie's pacifist hero. Ash is turned to stone in an attempt to stop Mewtwo and Mew from fighting, and Pikachu's compassion towards his master puts everyone else to shame. Before even Mr. Brock can run over, Pikachu is there, shaking Ash and trying desperately to revive him. And when that doesn't work, the waterworks come. And so we all learn that Pikachu crying is the saddest sight ever. No one wants to see something that adorable cry. Fortunately for our childhood memories, the tears pay off, and Ash is revived. But in a series supposedly about mastering and training Pokemon, Pikachu's display of devotion is arguably the most heroic and heartbreaking gesture in franchise history. Thank you for watching Tuned Up's Top 10 Pokemon Cartoon Moments. If you like this video, you might also enjoy our 107 facts about Pokemon or our top 12 underrated Pokemon from Generation 1. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, call us on our phone, and let me know in the comments that you think I'm an unabashed Gen 1-er. And remember, Frederator loves you!